Thank you for your patience as we're all gathered here this evening. We've just come from executive session uh, discussing our executive session items at this time. We will move into our session. inspirational moment, item 3.1. Uh, Mr. Manning. Well, I guess that's why I was holding the meeting. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, I was out there talking and didn't realize what time it was. So. Thank you for accepting responsibility. Uh, it's my, it, yeah, it's my fault. Thank you know, you. politicians, we like to talk. So, um, which actually kind of segues into my inspirational moment. So I wanted to talk today um, about a, a teacher because I know we're about to get back to school again and we have lots of folks that make this district work, not just teachers, but um, you know, so often teachers make have such a big impact on the lives of our families and our students and our community in, in so many ways. Um, and I say that as somebody who's a former teacher, married to a teacher, mother who was an educator, so a lot they, they hold a special place. But um, there was this uh, teacher named Jake Brock, and he taught um, high school PE. And this teacher um, was – he special teacher, um, particularly to me, but uh, he one day pulled aside this student in his classroom and he said, you know, young man, would you be willing to help me out with the football team? We need somebody to come to the games and, and help film. And this guy was a particularly shy student, um, you know, didn't really, wasn't kind of the man about school in the high school. And uh, and so the, the student said yes and, and kind of got to working with that. and. Through that opportunity, got an opportunity to hang out with the athletic trainer in the school, um, ended up getting interested in sports medicine and athletic training, um, and ended up going to, to college for that. And uh, of course, that student was me, and y'all would not know it today, but back then I was extremely shy. I didn't talk to other students. I didn't, I was not quite the sociable person that I am today, but um, I am where I am because of that coach. Um, because he took the time to care about a student who nobody else paid attention to. And, uh, and that's a story that happens every single day in our classrooms. And not just in our classrooms, in our schools, and our communities. So if you see a teacher, thank a teacher uh, for what they do. Um, I'm sorry I get a little emotional, but, um, but it did change my life. So that's my inspirational uh, moment, and we can say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Manning. I appreciate your inspirational moment as well as acknowledging while we started a minute and a half late. <laughs> But I'm, I appreciate it, I'm saying, I appreciate it. I appreciate a true story. It's called a testimony from where I'm from. So I appreciate your sharing um, your story tonight and inspiring us all. And at this time, we will move into to item 4.1, approval of our current agenda. If I could get a motion, please. Madam Chair, yes, ma'am. I move to approve the agenda for the August 14th, 2018 board meeting. Thank you, Ms. Agostini. Can we get a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Mr. Plank. Um, it's been moved by Ms. Agostini and seconded by Mr. Plank that we accept the current agenda and we will move to a vote at this time. By a vote of seven to zero, the motion passes. And at this time, we will move to item 5.1, special recognitions. Mrs. Ruth. Thank you, Chairman Mackey, Dr. Davis and board members. Thank you for this opportunity. We actually had some activities going on this summer that um, demonstrates that Richland II is premier all year long and garnering awards. So we wanna get these last few in before we start a new school year and rack up even more. 
Um, our students may still be on, they are still on, you know, summer break. And so it may, may have been a little bit of a challenge for them to get here, which we understand, but we have representatives from their school. If they're not here, we'll come forward. So tonight we'll begin by calling up Alicia McCall from Spring Valley High School and her principal, Jeff Timoni, is here as well. If Alicia's not here, then Mr. Timoni will come on up. Alicia is here. Great. Alicia, um, this summer, went to represent our district and our state in Spring Valley in the National Leadership Conference for the Future Business Leaders of America in Baltimore, Maryland. She qualified for this national conference by winning first place at the State FBLA Leadership Conference in Charleston, and she won in the Introduction to Parliamentary Procedures, which our board members know is very impressive. <laughs> It takes a lot to know that and then to win a competition about that on top of it. So we congratulate her and we appreciate her representing us this summer. Listen. Mr. Timoni had some other students who went to the national, well actually the HOSA International Leadership Conference, <coughs> Davik Karai, Abi Nail, and Pallavi Rao. If you are here, please come forward. HOSA stands for Health Occupation Students of America and is a national career and technical student organization which prepares students to enter the healthcare field. 30 students and three advisors attended the HOSA State Leadership Conference in Charleston in the spring, and three students brought home first place awards, which qualified them to attend the Nas International Conference in Dallas. Javik won first place for sports medicine, Abi won first place for medical terminology, and Pallavi won first place in the physical therapy category. Congratulations. <laughs> Will Riley Offered from Ridgeview High School come forward along with uh, your principal, Dr. Brenda Mack Foxworth. Riley, who will be a senior this year, is taking on an important responsibility for our state. He has been named chairperson of the Youth Advocacy Committee on the South Carolina Attorney General's Human Trafficking Task Force. He was selected by Attorney General Alan Wilson after working with South Carolina legislators and stakeholders to strengthen laws helping trafficking victims in South Carolina. This all came out of an advocacy project conducted through Ridgeview Scholars Academy for Business and Law. Earlier this summer, Riley chaired the first Human Trafficking Youth Summit in Columbia. He has spoken before the South Carolina Joint Legislative Children's Committee and was part of a proclamation condemning trafficking with Mayor Benjamin. He hopes to encourage youth to increase their involvement in the movement. We are so proud of you and the premier pathway you are following. Congratulations. Dr. Mac Foxworth in Ridgeview High also had an employee receive a state award. So we'll call up Ms. Sapora Little. Earlier this year, Ms. Little was named the Midlands Kate, which is Career Technology Education Counselor of the Year. And now we are proud to tell you she is the South Carolina Kate Counselor of the Year. Kate stands for career, oh, should have read on Shelly, you told them. And she plays an important role. She plays an important role in preparing our students for their future careers. Ms. Little is the counseling director of the Carolina Alliance for Technology, which we call the CAT Grant, and has been instrumental in solidifying computer programming and engineering at Ridgeview High and Westwood High. She has worked tirelessly to cement the district's relationship with mentors and community partners to provide opportunities for students in the CAT Grant. And I think, I just learned, and I think this probably will give a testimony to how Im impactful she is on her students, that one of your students found out about your award and emailed you and is here tonight, I believe. Got an email, got an email and is here tonight to make a presentation to you as well. Aww. Come on up. Aww. an email that she had received this award and saw that she was going to be recognized here tonight and he came on his own 
and I uh, wanted to congratulate her in person. So you know she makes a huge impact. So congratulations and thank you. Now if I could have Case and Dalton from Dent Middle School to please come forward with Principal Tamala Ashford. It's another one of our state award winning teachers. Ms. Dalton was selected as the 2018 South Carolina History Teacher of the Year by the Gilder Lehman Institute of American History, which sponsors the award. The award honors one exceptional K-12 teacher from each state, and for Ms. Dalton, we do mean exceptional. She is currently the co-chair of the South Carolina Council for History Education and has presented on historical thinking skills at several national and state conferences in the last three years. Last year, she received the South Carolina Council for Social Studies Best Lesson Award for her simula simulation of the Galileo trial. She focuses on historical thinking skills with her students to encourage her students to be problem solvers. She makes connections to current events so students see relevance in their lives. Ms. Dalton is one of 53 finalists for the $10,000 National History Teacher of the Year Award, and it will be announced next month, and you know we will all be cheering for you. Congratulations. As you may know, high school football season kicks off this Friday night, and we couldn't be as successful in athletes in Richland too without wonderful facilities. At this time, we'd like to call forward the hard workers who keep our athletic fields up to par. Please come forward stadium and turf manager, Billy Patowski, and crew members, Larry Medlin, Adam Woodley, Stan Ford and Ronald Howard could not be here tonight and want to bring up their department head, Executive Director of Operations and Logistics, Will Anderson. Pioneer Athletics has announced its winners of the 2018 Fields of Excellence Awards. And once again, all three of our district stadiums have made the list of the top maintained fields in the country. The Field of Excellence Award program is de designed to make others aware of their hard work Often faced with short, short timelines and sometimes short budgets, they certainly do a great job and we thank them for making game day very special with having exceptional feels. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Manning, if you will take a seat for a second, we're gonna have a special presentation and then we'll call the entire board up for a group photograph. For now, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Mary Beth Branham from LS3P and Bill Cram from MB Con. Thank you so much. We are so thrilled to be here tonight. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Davis. I'm Mary Beth Branham with LS3P Architects, and uh, we had the pleasure of being involved with this beautiful building that you have right here. Uh, I was the lead architect, and Bill Cram and MB Con uh, were the contractors on the project. And as you can see from the slide that I have there, we, we are just so thrilled that this building has been recognized so many times. I've been before you a couple of times to show you some of the things, uh, but tonight we have a special award to talk to you about. But just to show you that, that this building that, that took so many people involved with have really just come to fruition. People are coming here. They want to find out more about the building, and it's just been an incredible project for us and certainly one for the district. I want to thank you for having the confidence to hire the team of MBCon and LS3P to design and build this facility. You know, we didn't start out to design and build a facility to win awards. The intent was to design and build a facility to educate students, provide professional development opportunities, and efficient administration space for the district, all while maintaining your budget integrity. The fact that it's won so many awards is just frosting on the cake for us, and again, we thank you for the opportunity to work with you on this great facility. So I also wanted to point out that we also have been featured in various publications, and Libby's got little excerpts she's going to hand you on just a few of those that we've been featured in. One was on the cover of Pat Clad, and, and two have been featured in other magazines. So again, it's, it's, it's about this great learning environment. It's about the materials that we use. It's about the sustainability. All of those factors have been really important. So specifically tonight, Bill and I, if Bill, if you could hold up this lovely certificate, this is actually an honor award that we received from 
from the A4LE South Carolina chapter. Uh, as a past president of A4LE, it was particularly thrilling and gratifying to be awarded this top honor from A4LE. A4LE stands for the American Association for Learning Environments, and its sole purpose is to improve the places where children learn. Uh, this association is comprised of architects, contractors, engineers, and school district personnel. In fact, Richland, too, has had um, involvement in A4LE for many, many years, and it really has, has really been an important part of how all of these wonderful facilities have come to fruition. I wanted to show you a couple of images from the award submission because you, a lot of these images you may not have seen, but it, it does take some effort to put these things together, but we have great cooperation and help from your <coughs> district staff, but just highlighting all those wonderful spaces that you have throughout the building, talking about the student area in particular, and talking about what happens in that wonderful open learning lab scenario, um, and just showing some action pictures of the students really using and occupying that space. And, and those are the reasons that we were given this top honor award. Uh, in fact, I wanted to read you a couple of juror comments talking about that they said they applaud the district. The district was really supportive of the idea of innovation and allowed the team to create. The building itself, with its programming that includes mixed use of public and private spaces, supports that theme of lifelong learning. So these are the things that came through in this design award and, and it really speaks to your building. In fact, this year, when we were presented this award, it was at the, our, our annual chapter meeting for the A4LE and it focused on school security. This is the type of things, those are types of topics that are covered in A4LE. And in fact, Alan Taylor, who you all have seen before, who was the project manager, actually was one of the architects who spoke about school security and how architects and districts work together and contractors to make security just that high priority that I know is important to you all as well. So thank you for the opportunity to be here again tonight. Uh, we also obviously highlighted all of the solar, wonderful solar uh, and energy efficient and, and sustainability efforts of the building in the award. Uh, but I'd also like now to give Dr. Davis um, and the board this lovely thing so that Dr. Davis can hang it somewhere in the building. And again, thank you so much for the privilege of being part of this project. Yes, sir. And that concludes Special Rex. Dr. Davis, if you will. Just really quickly, um, if uh, for a point of privilege, uh, I also wanted to recognize, I uh, thank um, LS3P and MPCon for, uh, for partnering with us and working diligently with us, that process to design this building as well as selecting the things and programs that will go inside the building was a long uh, but very pleasant task. But I also wanted to take an opportunity to recognize all those other individuals in the district who had a big part uh, in the uh, selection of courses, the design of the building, the use of the building, a lot of hard work went into that. That includes our board members who had an opportunity to, um, uh, of course, share their goals and visions for the building, as well as our executive staff and all the members that participated in it. And I would be remiss, although he is uh, not currently on the payroll for Richland School District 2, he's still a part of our family, and that's Jack Carter, who also played an essential role in making sure that this building was uh, recognized as one of the leading buildings. So we appreciate all of you for all your efforts and hard work. This is our award, and 
I didn't want to celebrate or, or receive it without acknowledging all those individuals who had a vital role in, in making sure that we uh, were being premier in the development of this facility. So thank you all. Round of applause. Thank you all. Um, I had a few comments, but I couldn't have stated it better than Dr. Davis said that. So ditto, ditto, absolutely. Now we'll move to item six, our consent agenda. If I could receive a motion to approve the same, please. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I'd move that we approve the consent agenda for the August 14th, 2018 board meeting. Thank you, Mr. Plank. Can we get a second, please? Second. Okay. It's been moved by Mr. Plank and seconded by Dr. Caution Parker that we receive our and approve our consent agenda. If we can take it to a vote now, please. By a vote of seven to zero, we have approved item six, our consent agenda. Next, we will move to item seven, it's public participation. We have one person who signed up this evening, Dr. Christopher Haas, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes. Dr. Haas, um, just as a few housekeeping rules, um, you'll be allowed three minutes to speak tonight. Um, we ask if it's possible that you refrain from um, identifying any specific student members, students or staff members, faculty and schools, and we won't be able to directly address what you say tonight, but if you do have questions or concerns, a staff member will be more than happy to follow up with you at a later time with the answers to your questions or concerns. Thank you okay. for being here, Thank and you. you pressed the red button, so have at it. Oh, it was already on. I it was on. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Thank okay. you. So hello, my name is Chris Haas. I'm a second and third grade teacher at the Center for Inquiry, but I'm also an area leader for SE for Ed. And as I hope you know by now, SE for Ed is a collection of more than 18,000 teachers around the state who are dedicated to solving some of the problems that we see in education and having teachers' voices heard and being at the table. As you know, the state has failed to meet their legal funding requirement for the past 10 consecutive years in terms of funding education to the legal limits of which they're supposed to do that. And that's become one of the three main issues that we're trying to work on as an ally to the board, to the district office, and to students and teachers across the state. In meeting with multiple people, we've been told there's a number of reasons for this problem. We've heard that legislators just never hear from teachers. We don't make ourselves heard. We've been told that as many as 20% of teachers don't register to vote, and even more don't show up to the polls. And that's another major issue we're facing. And the final one is that education already accounts for more than half the state budget, and there's just no more money to spread around. But we were given an invitation that if we could find a way without raising taxes, then people might be willing to listen to us. How could we resolve this issue? So at SC for Ed, we've been working hard to address each of these issues. And what I'd like to do tonight, as quickly as I can in three minutes, is give you some updates and some okay. efforts that we are making to do this. So in regards to ensuring legislators hear from educators on a consistent basis, we are helping thousands of teachers in the state identify who their legislators are, to craft emails, to craft letters, to give them templates they could use, give them model letters to help edit and revise anything they want to write. And then once they do that, to document that on a log so we can come back with data later and say, we know you've heard from teachers and we know how often you've heard from teachers because we've been keeping track of that data ourselves. Secondly, in regards to teachers not voting, we've already worked to organize voter registration events across the state. Here in Richland, too, I've been working with the district to set up voter registration tables on Friday at our in-services where teachers can come over and see if they need to update their information. And if so, we can help them do that. And if they're not registered, we can help to get them registered to vote. My next step is going to be to contact the district office again and see if we could possibly do the same thing at open houses and events like that. So that as parents come in, we can let them know right away if they're registered. And if not, we can find ways to do that for them. Um, we're also holding town halls with carry our candidates from all parties so that educators can be more um, educated on, on what people are standing for. And lastly, in terms of school funding, we've learned a lot about state taxes. One thing we've learned is a lot of money is lost to tax exemptions, as much as $3 billion. And we've told that there's too strong of a lobby effort behind that for us to ever change it. But we would love to see a strong lobby effort behind education because that's very important to our communities and that's very important to our state. So these are the efforts we're using, some of the efforts that we are using to address inadequate funding of South Carolina schools. 
I would be happy to come up in future board meetings and tell you other things that we're doing. But if it's more convenient for you, I'd be happy to email you or call you or show up at your front door because we're going to be at every meeting and we just want you to know that we are here to support you and we love the support that you give us. But we want teachers at the table. We want a voice too. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Haas, um, for taking the time to be here. We can't directly respond, but we will say thank you for being here and for those who'd like a recap of what you shared tonight. Uh, it will be aired on YouTube when our board meeting is aired online. So duly noted. Thank you for being here. We appreciate that. Next, we'll move to item 8.1, our legislative update. Mr. Shad, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will yield to Dr. Miley for the legislative update. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, even though the legislature is out of session right now, uh, and that's typically what we talk about this time, there was an issue that came up, uh, we just got notified on the 6th of August, that we thought that you might like to know about, and perhaps the public also. We got a notice from the State Department of Education that uh, we, we, we could apply for funding for new SROs. Uh, the state allocated $2 million statewide for SROs in the state to increase the number of SROs in the state. Uh, while that's a, a, a great effort, uh, as you know, it would cost District 2, Michelin 2, $2 million to have a SRO in every, dis every school. So it's not a very, uh, very robust funding formula for the state. But they did notify us that we had 11 days to apply for uh, their due this Friday. Uh, I mean, the 17th, the, uh, the applications are due the 17th, that all districts had an opportunity to apply for this $2 million. So at first we thought that we really wouldn't have why apply. Uh, we know with it, and we also contacted the sheriff's office. Um, we know that a new SRO is over $100,000, and 81 school districts, you don't split $72 million very doesn't go very far with 80 dis school districts. But the, the more we thought about it, and especially with input from Penny Denny, who has worked with the grants and the State Department a lot, frequently uh, school districts don't apply. And so what they do is they have the same pot of money spread over fewer school districts, which means they can give more per school district. So we thought we'd go ahead and apply for the funds. And I just wanted to update you and let you know sure. we are going to, we're working with it. We got some data from the sheriff's office. They understand that if we get the grant, we'll be, uh, we'll have funds for new SRO. If we don't get the grant, we won't. And they're comfortable with that. But I just wanted to let you know about, uh, one, the state did step up and fund $2 million statewide, and two, we were going to go ahead and apply, ask for an SRO funding uh, with, uh, with, hopeful, with hope, but not great expectations, but we wanted to let you know we were doing that. Mrs. Zagstini, thank I, you, Dr. Miley. Thank you, Dr. Miley. I just want clarification. Is it $2 million total that the state was total. paying? To, to all of the districts, so Correct. we're all going Correct. for the $2 million. Correct. I mean, They've been told so, that, the, okay. that, it's, that it's a $70 million issue. Right. Okay. But they allocated two million dollars. All right. I thought I misunderstood what you said. But that's what I read. In the I wish paper. I was so wrong. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, any other uh, yeah. questions? Dr. Oakland Johnson. I just want to say thank you so much for applying, and I did reach out to Dr. Davis about that because small amount of money is still money, and I think anytime we have an opportunity to apply for free money, we need to take advantage of that because that money could be used for training the SROs that we already have in the district or even some other safety measures. So I'm glad to see that we took advantage of the opportunity. We don't want to just throw away We decided money. that we, it would Absolutely. be worthwhile to at least apply. So Thank yes, ma'am. Mr. Manning? Is that recurring money or one time I money? Yes, it is recurring money. It is recurring money. Now, they, the $2 million is recurring. They didn't specify whether if we got a grant that that would be recurring to us, but I'm sh I would hope that it would be. But I don't know. Thank okay. You. Thank you. I was assured that the $2 million was in the state budget was recurring dollars. So the, SD, the State Department will have it next year. Whether they grant it to the same applicants, I don't know. Thank you, Dr. Miley. Quick, quick question. With I'm glad we're applying as well. Is there a, a stipulation placed? I don't know if you know that. Is there a stipulation placed on what the money is used for? Does it have to be for the to to hire new SROs, or can it be for any service that's re, that, that's required in that department? Primarily to hire new SROs. Okay, they did be, make it clear that it couldn't new. be used for, to supplant okay. funds. That is, we can't take. Let's say we got fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. We couldn't. Mm -hmm 
use it to pay for our current SROs. Gotcha. That's the planning, against and that's the against okay. the rules of this allocation. Okay. So thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Are there any other questions for Dr. Miley at this time? Thank you, Thanks. Dr. Miley. Thank you, Mr. Shad. Next, we'll move to our voting on executive session items, starting with item 9.1, student appeals. If we could uh, entertain a motion, please. Madam Chair, yes, ma um, I move that uh, for student one, and that's the only student we have, that we uphold the recommendation of the administration. Thank you, Dr. Caution Parker. Is there a second to second. your motion? Thank you, Mr. Shad. At this time, we will receive the vote, please. By a vote of six to one, uh, the motion to uphold the administration's recommend recommendation is upheld. Thank you. Moving on to item 9.2, it's a contractual matter regarding the sale of property. It's actually plural, contractual matters regarding the sale of, of two properties. If we could uh, receive a motion at this time, please. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. I move that this board authorize the sale of a portion of property located on Percival Road for the improvement of the intersection of Percival Road, Screaming Eagle Road by the Richland County Transportation Penny Program and accept the official offer made to the district. The property is shown as Richland County TMS number R28800-02-28 and is currently a vacant site. Thank you, Mrs. Agostini. Is there a second to that motion, please? Second. Thank you, Dr. Elkins Johnson. We've had a motion and it's been properly seconded. At this time, we'll vote on item 9.2, the item regarding Percival Road, please. I'm sorry, by a vote of seven to zero, the motion carries. Thank you. Now we'll move to, still, we're still in item 9.2 and we'll receive a motion regarding the second um, prop, sale of property, please. Can Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. I move that this board authorize the sale of a portion of property located on Polo Road for the improvement of Polo Road by the Richland County Transportation Penny Program and accept the official offer made to the district. The property is shown as Richland County TMS number R19811-01-02 and is the site of Polo Road Elementary School. We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Stad. It's been motioned and properly seconded. Are there any questions? Is there a question? Any discussion at this time? If not, we'll move to a vote. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can you correct that for us, Mrs. Sherman? Thank you, I forgot. Okay. By a vote of seven to zero, the motion carries, and there has been a, a change to reflect that Mr. Shad did indeed second the motion. Thank you. Now we'll move on to item 9.3, the contractual matter regarding the transfer of property. If we could receive a motion at this time, Madam please. Chair. Yes, Mr. Shad. I move that this board approve and authorize the administration to donate approximately 30 acres of land and any fixtures thereon to Richland County for the development and construction of trails for recreational purposes being shown as Richland County TMS number R16910-01-01-02. And R16915-01-01-02. Property was donated to the district and the property is not in the long range plans of the district. 
Thank you, Mr. Shad. Can we receive a second, please? Second. Thank you, Mr. Plank. It's been motioned and properly seconded. Um, is there any discussion at this time? If not, we'll move to a vote, please. By a vote of seven to zero, the motion carries. At this time, we'll move to item 10.1, approval of policy revision uh, GBEB staff conduct. Dr. Davis, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, members of the board, um, we are asking for the approval of a policy that was brought to you during our last board meeting. Uh, that policy um, revisions of GBEB staff conduct uh, to approve the proposed changes to policy to the policy uh, as presented. If there are any questions, we have um, Sean Williams available to assist. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Um, can we receive a, a motion at this time before we enter discussion? Is there a motion? Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Plank. I move to approve the proposed changes to policy GBEB. Staff conduct is presented. Thank you, Mr. Plank. Is there a second? Second. We've had a motion and it's been properly seconded by Dr. Caution Parker. Is there any discussion at this time? While well, we have Ms. Williams at the podium. If not, we'd ask that you cast your votes regarding this policy. By a vote of seven to zero, the motion carries. Thank you. At this time, we'll move to item 11.1. Dr. Davis, you can read all that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, members of the board, we'll bring before you this afternoon, this evening, the proposals for the following policy revisions. Other uh, policy revisions will be DB, annual budget, DBG, budget adoption process, DBJ, budget transfers, and IKFC employability credentials, and we have Dr. Harry Miley and Ms. Katina Davis uh, to present those policies to you this evening. Okay. You have one. Okay. You one. Um, before you tonight is a new policy um, based on a new um, academic program for our students with disabilities, the employability credential. Um, it will, we will phase this in over the next four years. We'll start off with um, ninth grade this year, um, we are um, just purchased new curriculum for the coursework, and this will allow students with disabilities to um, leave us with a, an employability credential that we will um, educate our community about um, over the next few years. Are there any questions regarding this policy? If not, we'll move on to the next one. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay. We'll move on. We have three, three, three policies for your consideration that will be taken for action next time. Uh, DB, which is the annual budget. Uh, we've taken the recommendations from the school board association and added more details to the budget, uh, annual budget, as you can see. Uh, it includes uh, references to the Act 388 in terms of the millage rate cap. Uh, at one time, we felt like that was appropriate just to leave that in law since it's the law anyway. Not, it doesn't have to be repeated in policy, but apparently the school board association recommends that, so we're suggesting that and we'll be glad to answer any questions about this or let you review it over the next couple of weeks. Any uh, questions? Dr. Alkins Johnson. I have a question for DBJ. Is that one that you're going to go back to? Yes, ma'am. We're going to okay. do one. I'll be we're glad to take that one. next. We can take that right now. Um, Any questions on DB first? No? Okay. Budget transfers, we address budget transfers in other places in our policies. There was no policy for budget transfers. Uh, the, uh, the School Board Association recommends that there should be a policy that directly addresses budget transfers. We agree. So what you see, is they had recommended multiple options. Uh, we have suggested language at the top uh, that we think is appropriate, and that's for your consideration. So the, the, again, this isn't striking any policy right now because we don't have a, we have, we address 
transfers in another policy, but we don't have a policy called budget transfers. That's what this one would create. So this is in keeping with our current policy. We're just delineating it. It's not anything new we're doing. You it, know what I'm saying? It, it amends it slightly, but it it's, doesn't, uh, but again, it, 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 we haven't gone back to the, we haven't gotten to the other policy right. where we address budget transfers. So we will do that. Gotcha. Thank you. Are there any questions? Question. Yes, I have a question. I wanted to go back to the last line, which says transfers between major budget categories that exceed 10% of the general fund will be reported to the board in the quarterly finance report. I would love to see that maybe not reported, but approved by the board. I know um, before we had a concern with money being transferred over the 10% amount and us not being aware of it until later on. So I would love for that to come before the board and be approved by the board, not just reported to the board. Uh, uh, that, is a good con that is a good suggestion. We suggest that it be after the fact because knowing when a transfer is going to occur is very difficult. That is, since expenses do occur, especially in some of the smaller categories like our contracts and, and uh, grounds and keeping and things like this, uh, contracts like that, we can have an isolated event that would put us over that 10% without any, without any, a lot of warning. That's the problem with having it approval, having it approved beforehand. We wouldn't be able to pay for that expenditure if we had to come to you for that approval beforehand. That's, we felt like it was important to notify the board, keep you up to date, which we could do, but in terms of the management of the operations, we felt that it was more realistic to have it after the fact. But we will, it's your policy, we'll be con glad to consider anything you wanna do. It's just going to be very difficult to manage that ahead of time. And thank, you for, thank you for sharing that. And we've been able to manage that for many, many decades. And I would like the board to consider changing that from being reported to approved by the school board because we have to be accountable for the money that's being transferred and we need to be aware of how the money is being spent. And as I shared before, we had a concern a few years ago where money was transferred without the knowledge of the school board members and we're talking about over $275,000 and that concerned me, it concerned a lot of the constituents and I think before we just allow the superintendent to approve money and just share it with the board, the board need to be aware of the taxpayers money and how we use it. Again, it's, it's the will of the board. We do have in here that it, we could not exceed the budget. So the total dollar budget can't be exceeded. This would be a transfer between major items in the budget, for instance, between services or uh, contracts or fringe benefits or something. So again, it's the board's policy. We will certainly do, we will, will the language will reflect what the board wants to do. Again, we just think that Given that this is a rare occurrence, it is a difficult thing to look forward and, and see that budget transfer being needed, but it's the will of the board. Madam Chair. Quick, quick comment. Yeah, uh, that, yeah, quick comment before, Doctor. So what I'm hearing you saying that is if, if there is a need for a budget transfer of that, of that um, excess, it would be for operations, for operations? Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. That's the, the operations are the, uh, the we're pretty sure about, I mean, we can track employees, we can track fringe benefits, so those are really known variables. It's the unknown variables like uh, a new uh, expense from maintenance, repairs, major repairs that we might have, that are line items that are much smaller component of the budget, but then 10% of that line item is thrown out of line. Dr. Caution Parker. Um, I'm not exactly sure how, how I remember all the issues that, that went about that, you know, haven't been working in, in the district during that time. Um, I'm just not sure how we would vote on that. Would, would you present two, two, two pieces of information within the same policy and we vote on one or would we recommend one? And if we, if we've approved, agreed, 
No, 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 no. I know how you know the prices budget transfer. No, I'm talking about developing the policy, the policy. So the recommendation would be we would have to do that for the next time. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I just wanted to be sure. Madam Chair. Uh, so I appreciate your attention to detail, and you've proven to do have, have a great record in that. Dr. Miley, I'm curious, with the constraints and the cash flow issues that you've just described, how often does this occur? Uh, I don't think it's occurred since I've been here. Okay. But it is a possibility, and it should be in the policy. Yeah, I appreciate the policy as is. Thank you. Dr. Johnson. Yeah, I want to go back. Um, Dr. Miley said he... It didn't occur since he's been here. That's incorrect. We did have that <coughs> occurrence with the SRO where we transferred over 200 plus thousand dollars and it was not a knowledge of the school board members until after the fact. It wasn't, uh, a, that was not a major line item in our budget transfer. Right. So you mentioned earlier when you addressed Mrs. Mackey's question about it's only for operations. Will we go back and include operations in this policy because it's missing in this policy? No. What, 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 again, you're right. We did have transfers, but we weren't among, again, the budget has major categories in it. And of those major line items, moving more than 10% of that would be addressed in this policy. Uh, in, under those line items are multiple lines of, of expenditures, SROs being one of them. Right. So. This would entail a line item of a major expenditure, like we've presented in the budget, right. of, that, um, of that magnitude. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure you may need to repeat your question again. My question is, when you address Mrs. Mackey, you indicated that it, this 10 percent will only be towards oh, operations. Oh, no, it would be, it would be so, any, any line item. So yes, I'm, I was just giving an example of, right. of those that are more likely to... So I'm to, asking, to are we going to go back and include operation funds in this? policy? We because recommend it would be major budget things. categories. That's what we're recommending. That's, that's the major budget categories um, in the budget that y'all approve. Madam Chair. Mr. Manning. Um, Dr. Miles, correct me if I'm wrong, but if we put this, put this in policy, you present to us after the fact, and for some reason y'all forgot or didn't put it in there, then these, these are the types of things that would come up in our audits, correct? When correct. auditors look correct. in the audit, they're going to look at this policy and they're going to come back afterwards and say, this was not authorized per your policy or it was. So the board has that level of protection against these types of transfers being made by staff without our knowledge because we have the auditors that will come behind and look at these policies. Is that correct? Correct. And again, we, 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 we want to notify, the, we're suggesting we notify the board uh, in a quarterly report like we right. do now. Um, it's just that prior approval for a line item transfer is a very difficult thing to anticipate. Uh, and so that's why we're saying you keep us accountable, we'll be transparent, we'll report it to you. Um, to my knowledge of the major budget categories, we have not had a, a transfer of more than 10% and since I've been here. Uh, we have had in between lines, smaller lines, but not major budget categories. And we think that would be, uh, would be holding ourselves up accountable and realistic in terms of being able to do it. And Ma Madam Chair, I'm fine with the policy is. Thank you, Mr. Mackey. I mean, oh, Mr. Manning. <laughs> Yes, I want to go back to something that Mr. Manny um, indicated about the auditors being able to see that. When we're transferring funds, the auditor is not going to come to us and say, you transferred $275,000 towards SROs so you're out of compliance because we're still in compliance when we transfer money as long as we're doing it in decency with order. That's not my concern. My concern is being able to transfer funds and the board's not being aware of it until after the fact. That's why I like to see it reworded from being reported to the board to being approved by the board because we approve the budget. So if we're approving the budget right now for particular items and then you go back and you use the money for something totally different, we're held accountable for that. So we need to know where the money is going and how much it's being moved from account to account. 
Dr. That's Davis. accountability to our taxpayers and to our constituents. Dr. Davis. Just to Madam. clarify, the auditors would catch us. They would say, you, but you're budgeted $100 million for this major, major line mm -hmm. item, and you transfer it because they'll do the end of the year audit, and they would see a transfer, and it wouldn't equal to our budget, so they would write us up. So the auditors would write us up if we transferred more than 10 percent unauthorized. Which hasn't been the case. Ma Madam Chair, if I may have a moment. Um, it would be my recommendation to the board that administration has put forth a recommendation to the policy, and it's just a proposal at this moment. Is there any um, discussion or whether what the policy states is a matter of the board? Um, but this is a recommendation from administration to the to the board on how the policy should be read or how the policy should be stated. There are additional policy to cover uh, the governance of how we transfer money and what's appropriate. Um, should there be any additional thing that need to be added specifically to this policy? We present this policy to the board uh, for your consideration and would take any uh, amendments or additions that the board sees, to, sees fit and then represent that. But the debate of whether or not of how it's done, I think is uh, at this point n not uh, something that we can, uh, we can uh, uh, we can have at, at this moment. This is what we think is best for the operations of the school district and so that we're not tying up district funds um, and trying to seek approval. If for some reason we have a one board meeting a month in the month of July and we need to move something, then something will not be able to be done until we have another board meeting. There are several board meetings throughout the year where we only have one board meeting uh, the month of um, November, if I'm not also not mistaken, as well as the month of July. And so that could put the district in some sort of um, issue where we can't, we don't have the ability to make the administrative decisions. And so we're asking that the board gives us the trust that we will only move the amount of the money when necessary, uh, anything above 10%. Uh, uh, but it's at the will of the board and for the board to discuss and deliberate on. Madam Chair. This is Mr. Plank. Uh, and just one other thing I wanted to add. Uh, you know, we, as we approach budget season to begin with, um, just for the benefit of the public and those who are here, we, we, we were approving a budget, a final line item budget. Um, and at the same time, from a macro sense, we're looking at it from, there are categories, the superintendent, you guys bring buckets, if you will, that we need to consider. But all in all, those are buckets that you guys have decided upon. We then approve the budget. So I, I, we have tried to stay out of the weeds of allocating where the, what those buckets look like to begin with. And so I, to, to remain consistent and have some continuity in this, I, I, that's why I'm favoring the, the policy as written, simply because on the backside, th that, that decision and trust and and, and um, priorities that you guys see, to Dr. Davis's point, make sense. So thank you. At this, Mr. Molly, if it will not be too much trouble, is there any way you can look at other school districts and see if they have something, since this is a new policy for us, be glad and to. see if they have something like budget transfers and be able to send something to us so we can have be happy something to, to yes, have an example to look at, yes, see how they do things? I would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Madam Chair. Are there any other questions? Mr. Shad. Thank you. Um, Dr. Molly, am I to understand that the current policy is what we have below the suggested amount at the top, all this option one, option two through no. five that's um, being struck? I, we do not have a policy right now for budget transfers, period. We have a, in one of our other policies, we address budget transfers but we don't have a policy titled budget transfers. The school board association is recommending that we create a new policy titled budget transfers, and they gave us rec uh, several options from other school districts and other, other language. And so we reviewed those, and we kind of put those all together and took pieces and parts and suggested we like this language. So this would become our budget transfer policy. Okay, so just because the school board association recommended we implement one, if we already have one in some other area, we can reject this one and, so choose. and we'd yes. still be fine because we've been operating this way for several decades already. Correct. Although we think that's, it's, a de it's a big deal and we think it's appropriate to be in policy, so we're fine with it being a, budget, a, a standalone policy. Um, we're comfortable with that. 
but either way, what it, like, whatever you whatever you decide, it's the board's policy. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are there any other questions or concerns at this time? Dr. Miley, I will say at the end of the day, this is a non-voting item. So um, I think that we've had a board member who's requested some information regarding other school boards. We're happy to receive that and that the next board meeting will have, will, will have the option to vote it up or down at the end of the day. Thank you for your presentation. If there are we have one more, but we have yes. one more. DBG, um, DBG, right? DBG. Thank you. The budget adoption process. Ours was pretty, we think it was a, just about appropriate. We've made some suggested uh, language changes um, and we'd like you to consider those. Are there any questions regarding DBG at this time? If not, thank you for your presentation, you. Dr. Miley. Thank you. And we will move on to item 12.1, agenda items for August 28th, 2018. Dr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, members of the board, the agenda items for the August 28th uh, board meeting uh, is as listed. We have our student appeals, adult ed request, technology report, legislative update, approval of policy revisions DB, DBG, DBJ, and IKFC, as well as a proposal for revisions to section D, an update on ESA, and the superintendent's back to school report. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Are there any recommendations or suggestions from any other board members who would like to see any items added to this agenda or future board meeting agendas? Okay, if not, we will move on to, thank you, Dr. Davis. We'll move on to item 13-1. There's no one else who's signed up for public participation, but if there's anyone who wants to address the board at this time, uh, please feel free to do so. If not, we'll move on to item 14.1, board and superintendent comments. And we will begin on my left with Mr. Shad, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Welcome back, uh, teachers, students, parents, staff, faculty, administration. I wish you all well this school year. Thank you. Shad, Mrs. Agostini. I wanted just to congratulate all those that were recognized tonight and thank Dr. Haas for giving us an update on South Carolina for education. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Agostini. Dr. Elkins Johnson. Just want to say welcome back to all of our teachers that have returned. And as always, I like to remind you that as our students return back to school, remember the parents have sent us their very best. So if we can greet them each and every day with a warm smile encouragement, high expectation, and just support. That's what they need. You never know, they may not receive that at home, but we need to make sure we provide a safe haven when they come to our school every day. Welcome back, teachers. Thank you, We Dr. appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. Elkins Johnson. Dr. Caution Parker. Um, welcome back <clears throat> to everyone. Um, this has been a very good meeting, kind of short, and I want to commend <laughs> Madam Chair it is not quite 7.30. We've got one minute left. <laughs> Thank you. we got some credit. Mr. Manning. Thank you. I took your minute away. <laughs> <laughs> when I showed up a few minutes, I asked the young lady that got That's the okay. parliamentarian award, I said, they tell you to show up on time. She just laughed <laughs> at me. But... Um, anyways, I do want to thank all the uh, all the folks that are coming back, the teacher staff, maintenance folks that keep all these facilities looking so nice and everything functioning as it should, um, so we don't even know that they're there. Um, all the Jake Brocks in the world that, uh, that are coming to school to help our young folks realize their potential and, and their success in the world. Um, also want to remind everybody that we do have a bond referendum in November um, so that we can make sure that all of these students have a safe place to come to school and to be with us every day, that our teachers have the spaces they need to be successful as we heard the highlights today about this facility and how that really complements the educational process to have the right facilities, the buses to make sure that they get to school on time and that they get to school in a safe manner. Um, so please don't forget us in November uh, for our ballot referendum. Um, otherwise, thank everybody for your time and uh, the last Tyless Tuesday, so I'll be in a tie again next, uh, next meeting. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Manning. Mr. Plank. I think that's Mr. Manning's policy only. It is. Looking at Mr. <laughs> Shea. Um, 
You know, I, I've, I've recently read a book. It was more of a picture book, but it was uh, an author of talking about driving through the back roads of South Carolina, and 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 talks about the contrast between that and heading down our interstates. And with us here in the Midlands, interstates are pretty much how we get from point A to point B. But it was kind of interesting, that concept about driving along and, and taking time to slow down a bit and, and get off the fast-paced world in which we lived. And, and it's been a neat time for me this summer to come along, teachers and educators, uh, to, to spend time talking with you guys off the interstate and on the back roads to understand what life is like with you and your families when you're not in the hustle and bustle of the classroom and, and all the testing and all the things that, w that we do here each and every day during the academic year. So I just want to thank you for the, for the moments you've shared with me throughout this summer. I hope you guys have enjoyed your summer. And I just encourage all of us to sometimes take that back road and get off the fast pace of the interstate. Thank you so much. Look forward to a great school year. Thank you, Mr. Plank. Dr. Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. We officially welcome back teachers on Monday for the start of the new school year. Some of the teachers spent their first day in the community visiting businesses, uh, nearby schools, and the homes of our students. Uh, if you don't know, uh, sixth and ninth graders in Richland too will get a head start on the new school year by participating in either Step Up the Sixth or Fresh Start on Tuesday, August the 21st. All district middle schools will host Step Up to Six, and high schools will host Fresh Start to help ease the transition from elementary to middle school or from middle school to high school. The first official day of school for the 2018-2019 school year is Wednesday, August the 22nd, the day after the Beyonce and Jay-Z concert. <laughs> As most of you know, <laughs> so I, I expect to see everybody at work on the first day of school. Uh, I will be fresh because uh, I'm not going. So I'm going to be really excited. So I hope I don't wake anybody up. <laughs> As most of you know, uh, this is an election year. Uh, voters would go to the polls on November the 6th, as stated earlier. Richland 2 has two bond referendum questions on the ballot. The district is seeking to borrow $486.4 million for safety and security improvements for schools district-wide, our transportation needs, improvements to our academic learning spaces, additions and improvements to our arts and athletic facilities, as well as technology upgrades. For more facts about available, um, I'm sorry, more facts are available at richland2.org forward slash bond. Thank you. Madam Chair, I do want to correct uh, our, oh, I'm our sorry. superintendent for throwing out 86, 486. Uh, Let's it's bring okay. it back That's to 468. Yeah. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> let, me, let me repeat myself yeah. for the record. That number is not 486. <laughs> it is 468. Uh, that's a big difference, uh, believe it or not. Difference. Thank you so much for the correction. Just, save 20 million, just, like just like that. Just save 20 million, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Thank you. Um, and, and just not to belabor the meeting, I want to echo my colleagues' sentiments um, regarding teachers, educators, uh, the summer, back to school. And I want to just say something. Yeah, this is an election year, but every, every time there is an election, please pay attention. I, I was listening to the comments earlier about um, educators and, and low voter turnout, and not to single out educators, but and as we as, a, we as a community and a people and a nation have to be diligent about voting, period, but just pay attention. For lots of times folks don't pay attention to school board things because you were, you know, you're, you're voting for president, you're voting for things like that. But with, with regard to your, to your tax dollars and your, and your school board stuff, pay attention. Just pay attention because everything, everything that's on the ballot, every category, every question, everything affects you and, and your students. And there was, I'm going to step out here and Lim, there was, there was some um, media press regarding, you know, school districts and schools recently. And I want to say that I'm, I, I'm proud of Richland too. Um, and not disparaging of any districts. All, the, all of the schools in this nation, you know, are doing the very best they can, the very best they can. And as Dr. Elkins Johnson said, you're educating the very best that, that the 
students that are brought to school. Teachers are the very best that we have. Administrators are the very best that we have. So I just want to say that I am not pro schools. I'm not for certain schools or admonishing any other schools. I'm for the district. I'm very proud of District 2. Um, not singling out any certain schools or, or, or you know, it, it singling out schools in other districts, but I'm proud of District 2, period. I am pro all of our schools, not just certain schools, and all of our teachers and all of our students, and I just want people to be mindful of that, that the seven of us here, I'm one person, but we operate as a unit of seven, but all of us are proud of all of our schools and our district and won't make any measures to uh, single out any one over the other, and that's all I'm going to say about that. I said I wasn't, but I did. So um, we just thank all the people who are in this room who support our schools and this district. Um, some of you have to be here. They have microphones, typically. Uh, some of you don't have to be here, but you thought it not robbery to be here and pay attention to what's going on regarding your students and your community, and we appreciate that and ask that you continue to do so. Watch online, and we just um, thank you for supporting this district because the end user is our students. You know, teachers can work anywhere. You know, administrators can work anywhere. We can all be doing something else. But the students who are zoned or choiced into certain schools, that's what they got. That's what they've got. These are the, this is the importance of public schools in our district, and our nation. And I'm off my soapbox now. But just thank you all for supporting our students. They are the end user in this deal and everything that we talk about. And that's all I've got to say about that. Moving on to item 15.1, we had all of our executive session item successfully included and concluded in our first executive session, so we won't have a need for another one. Therefore, fifth, item 16.1, voting on executive session, two items won't be necessary. So uh, moving on to 17.1, I would love to entertain a, move, a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Mr. Shad, is there a second? Second. Consider ourselves adjourned. Thank you.